this video demonstrates the correct procedure for using an otoscope. The otoscope allows the outer ear to be examined from the pinna to the external auditory meatus, ear canal, and up to and including the tympanic membrane, eardrum. Good morning, my name's Donna. I'm going to be looking after you this morning. During the initial consultation, the practitioner should confirm the patient's details and ask essential questions about their medical history. Do they have any current problems or concerns about their ears? Have they experienced any pain or discomfort in either ear that has lasted more than one week? Have they noticed anything running out of their ears other than earwax? Have they had any recent ear trauma or infections? Has any surgery been performed on their ears? Are they currently receiving any treatment for ear-related symptoms? Do they feel that one ear is better than the other for any reason? Other questions the practitioner may wish to ask. Do they have any signs of tinnitus? This could present as ringing, whistling, buzzing or rushing sound in their ears. Do they have any issues with their sense of balance? Have they experienced any facial numbness? Okay, Kunjo, so with your permission, what I'd like to do now is have a look in and around your ear. Okay, so in a moment, I'm going to use the otoscope, which is a light with a magnifier. Uh, just to have a look around the outside of your ear first, and then we'll gently go into your ear. Okay, at the same time, I'll pull your ear up and back with my other hand. Okay, so you will feel me doing that. Now, at all times, it shouldn't be uncomfortable at all, but if it is for any reason, just let me know and I'll stop. Is that okay? Are you happy for me to go ahead? That's fine. So we're going to use the otoscope to look in the ear now. And to switch the otoscope on, we're just going to pop the switch across. And as you can see, we've now got the light working on the otoscope. And um, we need to then add on the speculum and there are two different sizes of speculum, generally speaking. And for an average adult ear, you want to make sure that you're using the widest end speculum that fits comfortably into that ear. Okay, so when we attach the speculum, I'm going to pick the speculum up. We've already wiped that over. And then when you pop it onto the otoscope, we're just going to twist it round into position so that actually when you turn it over it doesn't fall off it's nice and secure in place when examining the ears the healthy ear should be inspected first observational landmarks on the outer ear include helix anti-helix concha Cross of helix, tragus, antitragus, and lobule of ear. The practitioner should be seated for the examination procedure. Using the otoscope light will help to see any physical abnormalities. The pinna and the skin adjacent to the pinna should be examined thoroughly by inspecting all the way round the outside of the ear. Abnormalities may include scars, skin tags or pits, malformation, inflammation, skin conditions such as psoriasis or eczema, growth or lesions, piercings that may affect procedures. For an adult ear, gently grip the pinna and pull it back and up. This will straighten the ear canal, aiding visualization. The little finger should rest across the patient's cheek to create a brace position. This helps to prevent any injury should the patient make a sudden movement. Slowly insert the clean specula into the ear canal, keeping it central and away from the canal walls. Examine the walls of the canal, noting the shape, size, orientation and anatomical structure. Following its shape until you are able to view the tympanic membrane. In some ears, the view may be blocked by wax, debris or the anatomy of the ear canal itself. 
The tympanic membrane is often a pearly white or grey colour compared with the colour of the ear canal wall. Once you have found the tympanic membrane, examine it closely, taking a cyclic approach, starting at 12 o'clock and moving clockwise. Observational landmarks of the tympanic membrane include Attic, also known as pars flaccida Lateral process of the malleus Long process of incus, sometimes visible through a healthy translucent drum Handle of the malleus Annulus fibrosus, also known as annular ligament Umbo, the end of the malleus handle and the centre of the drum. Light reflex, antero inferiorly, points towards the nose of the person. Okay, so we're going to have a look in and around your right ear now, if that's okay. So we're going to start off by looking all the way around the outer pinna all the way behind, underneath, and back in front by the tragus. Okay, that all looks nice and healthy. So what we're now going to do is insert the speculum centrally into the ear canal. Okay, and as we do that, the little finger comes out to brace and we pull gently but firmly up and back on the pinner itself with the left hand. Once we're in, we have a really good look at the ear canal and all the way around the tympanic membrane, noting any um, abnormalities. For a child's ear, it's essential that head movement is minimised. Children who may be unable to sit still independently during the procedure should be held sideways on an adult's lap. Their head should be gently but firmly braced. Once again, the practitioner should begin with an external examination of the ear using the otoscope light. It may be necessary, where there is a significant height difference, for the practitioner to kneel to perform the ear examination. Note that this should be performed on one knee for maximum stability. Before beginning the internal examination, Consider that the smaller diameter specular may be required for the otoscope. While conducting the internal examination, the practitioner should brace their little finger against the child's cheek in case of any sudden movement. This concludes the training video. Further resources can be found at thebsa.org.uk.